So uh, first of all, uh, I thank the organizers for inviting me and for giving me this opportunity to talk. So today I will talk about uh, my study or my attempt of non abelian host theory in the context of monopoles with periodicity. Namely, <coughs> I would like to explain uh, there exist equivalences between periodic monopoles and difference modules on C and uh, equivalences between W periodic monopoles and difference modules on C star and uh, equivalences between triple periodic monopoles and difference modules on elliptic curves. So I will explain more details on these objects later. <coughs> But uh, so let me mention my motivation very briefly. So <coughs> the Noabelian Hot theory uh, was developed by Professor Simpson for harmonic bundles and Higgs bundles and flat bundles on complex projective manifolds of any dimensions. And I like it very much. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, harmonic bundles on Riemann surface, Riemann surface and uh, monopoles with periodicities share some important properties. So it seems natural and uh, very attractive for me to uh, ask an uh, analog of the Noabian Hodge theory in the context of monopoles with periodicity. That is uh, my original motivation of this study. And very interestingly, the analog of Noabian Hodge theory also appear in the context of holomorphic flare theory of Professor Konsevich and Professor Soibelman. And as simple but non -trivial, as, as simple but non-trivial examples, uh, this this time this kind of equivalences between uh, monopoles with periodicities and reference modules appear uh, are expected. So that, that is also my motivation of this study. Okay, so <coughs> before explaining uh, our main result more precisely, uh, let, me, uh, let me remind you uh, the very beginning of uh, the Noah Bilan Hoche theory very briefly. So we consider only one dimensional case. So <coughs> let X be a compact Riemann surface, and we consider Higgs bundle on the Riemann surface, which means so E del Iba is a holomorphic vector bundles and uh, theta denotes a holomorphic section of end E tensor, the canonical bundle of X. And uh, <coughs> when we are given a Hamishan metric of the vector bundle, we obtain the Chan connection, which is a unitary, unitary connection whose del 1 part is equal to the given holomorphic structures. And we also have the adjoint of the Higgs field with respect to the metric. Then, the Higgs bundle with the metric is called harmonic bundle if the Higgs equation is satisfied, which means uh, the sum of the curvature of the Chan connection and the bracket of the Higgs field and its adjoint is zero. This equation was discovered by Professor Hitchin as the dimensional reduction of uh, instantons. Then, <coughs> very interestingly, Harmonic bundles has a family of lambda flat bundles. I mean, uh, for any complex number lambda, we consider differential operator d lambda given as the sum of the holomorphic structure and lambda times the adjoint of Higgs field and lambda times the one part of the Higgs chunk connection and the Higgs field. Then, <coughs> this differential operator satisfies a twisted Leibniz rule. And this is, this is very close to the ordinary twisted rule, but, uh, uh, like the rule, but uh, here we have lambda, so this is called uh, twisted like the, like the rule. And it also, it also satisfies the integrability condition. So this, this, this operator is called uh, flat, flat lambda connections. So anyway, so in this sense, uh, how we bundle has the underlying family of lambda flat bundles uh, parameterized by complex numbers. And uh, I, I don't explain that, it, but, but it is extended across lambda equal infinity. And uh, the original Higgs bundle appears at lambda equal zero. <coughs> then, according to Colette and Dorin and uh, Donaldson and Hitchin and mainly Simpson, uh, for each complex number lambda, harmonic bundles are equivalent to lambda flat bundles 
satisfying poly stability conditions and degree zero conditions. And this, this was, of course, generalized by uh, Colette and uh, Simpson <coughs> to the higher emissional case. And this is very important and uh, fundamental theorem in contemporary mathematics. For instance, this is one of the starting points of the very rich study of the modular space of Higgs bundles and flat bundles and character varieties. And uh, for another instance, it implies any semi-simple uh, flat bundles is equipped with a very strong structure, something like uh, a polarized variation of Hodge structures. And to clarify it and to formulate it precisely, Shakespeare introduced the notion of twister structures as a generalization of Hodge structures. And the idea invited to close the band myself to the study of twister D modules as a <coughs> twister version of Hodge modules of Monetico Saito. So we have some very strong consequence for the functoriality of the modules. And uh, as another interesting phenomena, we can obtain a non competitive deformation of spectral curve. I mean, sp sp uh, so if, we are, if we are given a curve in the cotangent bundle X with the line bundle, it induces the Higgs bundle on X. And uh, so under some mild assumptions, the Higgs bundle is stable of degree zero. So by this theorem, we have uh, the harmonic bundle corresponding to this Higgs bundle. And then it induces a family of lambda flat bundles on X, parameterized by complex numbers. And very briefly, so this procedure gives us uh, a method to construct uh, a from, from spectral curve we can construct a family of differential operator which degenerates to the original curve at lambda equals zero. And there are several procedures to construct this, such kind of differential operators, but the Noabian Hoch theory also gives one such construction. So anyway, this theorem is very important and fundamental and has many consequences. And uh, I'd like to explain uh, the exist analog of this theorem in the context of monopoles with periodicities. So for instance, as, an, as a consequence of our main result, uh, we, <coughs> as in the case of harmonic bundles, uh, we, can, uh, non we can obtain a non-competitive deformation of curves in the context of uh, difference, module, difference operators or Q difference operators. Okay, <coughs> so in the following, in the following my talk, uh, first I will explain a monopole with periodicities and uh, defiance modules of uh, defiance modules with, with parabolic structures. And then I will explain our main results. And uh, <coughs> for the proof of uh, main results, to obtain main results, there are many things to be clarified. But uh, uh, I would like to explain how to, the construction of defiance, oh, sorry, how, construction of defiance modules uh, from uh, uh, monopoles. Actually, there is a very classical idea to construct, uh, to obtain holomorphic objects or algebraic objects from monopoles, and which, which, which was efficiently used in several, uh, several <laughs> in previous studies. And of course, the idea is also important in, uh, in my construction, but uh, in my in my case, in most in most in most in most cases, uh, we need some modifications, so which I'd like to explain. And uh, I, would, I would also like to uh, mention about the comparison of semi-stable semi objects in the Toypoli periodic case. Okay. <coughs> then, <coughs> so in this talk, monopole means a solution of the Bogomolny equations. So uh, I mean, so let me explain. So let Mg you know an oriented three-dimensional Riemannian manifold, and uh, let Eh denote a vector bundle with a Hamiltonian metric on M, equipped with a unitary connection and anti-Hamiltonian endomorphism of V, which is called Higgs field in the context of monopoles. And then <coughs> the tuple of E and H and number and phi is called monopole if the Bogomolny equation is satisfied, which means 
the curvature of the connection is equal to the residual of the derivative of the Higgs field with respect to the connection number. And in this talk, we are particularly interested in monopoles on the quotient of Euclidean spaces. I mean, <coughs> so let gamma be a dis dis discrete subgroup of R3. And then we obtain the quotient of space, which is a naturally Riemannian manifold. And the Riemannian metric is induced by the standard Euclidean metric. Then, <coughs> so we are interested in monopoles on this, this space minus finite subset. And we regard this finite subset as the singularity of the monopoles. And uh, <coughs> if the rank of gamma is, uh, so, so rank gamma is isomorphic to an Abelian group of rank 1, then such monopoles are called periodic monopoles. Because we can regard it as a singular monopole on R3 with periodicity in one direction. And similarly, <coughs> if the rank of gamma is 2, then such monopoles are called doubly periodic monopoles. And if the rank, of three, the rank is 3, then it, they are called triply periodic monopoles. And as far as I know, a systematic study of mon monopoles with periodicity was started by Professor Cherkis and Professor Kapustin. And uh, since then, uh, particularly uh, Professor Cherkis and his collaborators have been studying periodic monopoles with periodic periodicity very intensively. Uh, and uh, yeah, <coughs> so we consider monopoles on the non-compact spaces. So we have to impose reasonable asymptotic condition on the behavior of the monopoles around the singularity and uh, infinity. And, infinity. and uh, we assume each. We like to assume each singularity is a Dirac type singularity. So let me remind you the definition of Dirac type singularity of monopoles. <coughs> So let u be a neighborhood of 0, 0 in R times C. And we consider monopole given on the or given on u minus 0, 0. And we consider hop vibration from C2 to, to, to R times C given by this formula. <coughs> and uh, uh, we <coughs> by, by the pullback of u, as the pullback of u, we obtain u tilde, which is a neighborhood of 0, 0. Then we obtain the vector bundle E tilde on U tilde minus 0, 0, and it is equipped with the, the pullback, uh, equipped with the metric obtained the pullback, and it is also equipped with the unitary connection, which is induced by the original connection nabla and Higgs field phi in this way. Then <coughs> Kronheim proved. This uh, vector band with metric and unitary connection is an instanton, which means the curvature of, of this connection is uh, anti self dual. And he defined 0, 0 of u is uh, Dirac type singularity of the monopole if this instanton is extended to an instanton u tilde. And so, by definition, uh, a priori, this instanton is just given on the, the component of 0, 0. But so, it, so and in general, it is not extended across zero zero. So if <coughs> this is, this is extended across zero zero, then zero zero of u is called Dirac type singularity of the monopole. So this is very natural and reasonable condition for uh, the singularity of monopoles. <coughs> and let me mention uh, uh, Pauli generalized this notion to the context of general Riemannian three manifolds. And the higher rank case was introduced by Charbonneau and Hartwig. And let me also mention, in the Euclidean case, uh, this condition of Dirac type singularity is actually equivalent to the condition uh, the norm of Higgs field is dominated by the inverse of the uh, inverse of the distance from the singularities. Uh, it was well known this condition is necessary for the Dirac type singularities. But uh, we showed, uh, so this is a result of my student, Joshin and myself. And uh, it, is, was, it was very well, no, well known, this condition is necessary for the active type singularities. But uh, actually, uh, <coughs> we showed this is enough to characterize the active type singularities. So what is the higher yeah. means here in the last 
Uh, yeah, so uh, precisely, so Pauli considered that only a SU2 case, so uh, higher rank case uh, uh, was given by Shalva and Hartwig. Higher rank means vector bundle. Uh, yeah, vector bundle, yes, right, right. So not, not dimension of the base space. Yeah, right. Thank you. <coughs> then uh, let me explain the condition for uh, monopoles, our monopoles. So monopole on the, the three-dimensional torus minus, minus finite subset is called meromorphic if each point of uh, each singularity is Dirac type singularities. So this is very natural condition for us. <coughs> and uh, monopole on the product of two-dimensional torus uh, and, and real line minus fine subset is called meromorphic if so each, each singularity should be uh, Dirac type singularities. And uh, we assume the boundedness of the curvature at the infinity. So <laughs> this is rather weak conditions. And there are several equivalent ways to uh, give these conditions. And uh, actually, uh, from this, we can deduce, from this weak condition, we can deduce uh, monopole is very close to a simple monopole. And uh, in particular, we can deduce the decay of the curvature in some directions. And it is very important for us. And in the one periodic case, a monopole on uh, T1 is just the S1, uh, so T the mon a monopole on the product of T1 and R2 minus fine subset is called meromorphic. Or well, in, in this case, I'd like to call it or, or GCK type, which means generalized Cherokee scapulosity type. But, uh, <coughs> uh, so if, it, uh, if it, each singularity is Jack type singularity, and the curvature is uh, dominated in this way. And again, uh, we can <coughs> uh, give this condition in several, in several way, equivalent ways. And, uh, <coughs> and we can deduce a much more uh, precise property from these weaker conditions. So the, uh, and uh, let I should maybe I should mention uh, previous work about uh, the classification of monopoles in terms of holomorphic objects. Actually, there are many beautiful works on the classification of monopoles in terms of holomorphic objects. And the most classical is uh, the work of Donaldson and Hitchin. So they obtained an equivalence between SU2 monopoles on R3 with L2 curvatures. And, they <coughs> and uh, so they obtained equivalence SU2 monopoles on R3 with L2 curvature and holomorphic map from P1 to P1. More precisely, Hitchin established uh, the null transformation induces an equivalence of between SU2 monopoles on R3 and uh, solution of null equation on intervals. And uh, Donaldson proved uh, <coughs> Uh, equivalence between uh, solution of null equation interval and uh, from a from P1 to P1. So as a composition of very interesting equivalences, they obtained this equivalence. And later, Hartwig uh, gave a more direct approach to obtain this equivalence. Uh, sorry. And, uh, <coughs> and their work was generalized uh, to, uh, by Hartwig, Murray, and Jarvis to the context of monopoles on pre principal, principal G bundles. And uh, <coughs> the work, this work was given in, uh, did, did, did done, by, done in 20th centuries. And uh, uh, the interest to monopole was renewed by the work of uh, Kapustin and Witten on the geometric Langland theory from a physics viewpoint. And uh, inspired by their work, uh, nobody studied singular monopoles on the product of the interval and the compact Riemann surface satisfying the Dirichlet condition along t equals zero and the Neumann condition along t equals one. And he obtained equivalence between such singular monopoles and holomorphic vector bundles with the Hecke modific modification of the Riemann surface. And recently, it was generalized to the Higgs case by uh, he and Walpuski. And Charbon and Hartwig studied singular monopoles on the product of S1 and the compact Riemann surface. 
and they obtained an equivalence of between such monopoles and holomorphic bundles with meromorphic automorphism on the Riemann surface satisfying some stability conditions. And my work is directly influenced by the work of Charbonneau and Hartwitz. Okay, so <coughs> the next I'd like to explain reference modules with parabolic structures. So <coughs> let alpha be any complex number. Then we obtain the automorphism of the polynomial ring by the shift of variable by alpha. Then <coughs> defines module on C is defined to be a module over the polynomial ring equipped with a C linear automorphism phi star such that phi star fs equals phi star f times phi star s for any polynomial f and any element s of v. So if alpha equals zero, such phi star is just an uh, automorphism of uh, module over the polynomial ring, so it is very algebraic object. But uh, if alpha is not zero, uh, <coughs> it is more complicated and called defines operators. And clearly, we can regard such defines module on C as a module over a non commutative algebra. I mean, we define A alpha as a direct sum of Cy phi star n. Then, this is naturally an algebra by this commutation relation. Then, clearly, defines modules are equivalent to modules over these algebras. And maybe this is rather technical, but uh, uh, I, in my study, I always assume torsion freeness and finiteness conditions. I mean, uh, <coughs> any uh, defines module is a torsion free as C module over polynomial ring. And uh, I always assume the existence of free C by sub module such that of finite rank, which generates uh, the whole module over A alpha, and uh, generically uh, it is the same as the whole modules. So I always assume this kind of torsion freeness and finiteness. And we can also consider defines modules on C star, <coughs> uh, which are often called Q defines modules. So we take any non-zero complex number, Q, and then we obtain the automorphism of the ring of Roland polynomials by the multiplication of Q on the variable Y. Then <coughs> a defines module on C star is defined to be a module over the ring of Roland polynomials equipped with a C linear automorphism phi star such that phi star fs equal phi star f times phi star s. And again, uh, such a uh, <coughs> defines module on C star can be regarded as a module over non commutative ring. So in this case, it is a quantum torus. And uh, I always, in my study, I always assume torsion freeness and finiteness conditions. <coughs> and uh, we can also consider defines modules on elliptic curves. So let t, uh, t denote any an elliptic curve, and we take a point of the elliptic curve. Then we obtain the automorphism uh, by shift, shift by alpha. Then <coughs> uh, a define, uh, sorry, defines module uh, on the elliptic curve T is an OT module V equipped with meromorphic isomorphism between V and the pullback by V, pullback of V. But uh, in the no abelian Hoch theory, we should consider parabolic structure along the similarity of algebraic objects. So, I, I, so I'd like to explain parabolic structure in this context. <coughs> so in the case of uh, defines modules on elliptic curves, a parabolic structure is defined as follows. So a defines module with parabolic structure on T is a data as follows. So first we take finite subset to D, and uh, for each point of D, we take uh, an increasing sequence of real numbers uh, between 0 and, e, zero and one, 1. And we also take locally free OT module V and uh, an isomorphism of <coughs> V and uh, phi star inverse V outside of D. And we also take lattices 
uh, of the stroke of V star D at P. We take a sequence of lattices uh, of the stroke of V star D at P. So we roughly So we are given, so this is T, and on T we have local, locally free modules, and <coughs> so we have five. So I, 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 I'm not too sure the direction, but uh, so here we, we have five star inverse V, <coughs> and there are isomorphism outside of finite point D, and along D, uh, we are given a sequence of lattices which describes the change of lattices at uh, some point. So, uh, in, in other words, we consider a sequence of uh, Hecke transformations at uh, the point of D. So, this is uh, defined a parabolic structure of uh, defined modules on elliptic curves. Excuse me, what is star D? Sorry? What is star, uh, D? star D means, so uh, I, I use the notation, so uh, <coughs> all star D means the shape of meromorphic functions whose poles are contained in D. Then <coughs> the degree of uh, difference module with parabolic structure is defined as follows. So first, we have the number as a, obtained as the degree of the bundle V. And <coughs> we have the sequence of lattices uh, here. So we have the relative degree of lattices which is defined as the uh, difference of lengths of these mod finite modules. And then <coughs> we, con we define the degree of V star in this way. So very roughly, this is just uh, the integration of uh, the degrees. I mean, so we have the sequence of uh, Hecke transformations. So at, <coughs> at each t, we, have, we are given some, so, uh, except, so uh, except for finite, finite number of t's, we are, we are given some uh, local receive on T. And uh, if we integrate, so, so this number is obtained as the integration of the degree of uh, <coughs> these lattices. And uh, <coughs> once, so, so if we are, when we are given the degree, then the slope is defined as usual. I mean, we define the slope as the ratio of the degree and rank of V. So is it that geometrically is it parallel vector bundles? Geometrically is it parallel vector bundles on compact uh, image services functions? Uh, so it, this is not, uh, so usually parabolic structure is defined in a different way, which I will explain, maybe, which will appear later. But so this is uh, not. Uh, uh, the same as the uh, uh, parabolic structure in the ordinary sense. It's, it's different equations, different problems. Yeah. And uh, once slope is defined, then the stability condition is defined in a standard way. I mean, uh, we start stable if the slope of the sub-object, non-trivial sub-object, is uh, strictly smaller than the slope of the V star. And we this is defined to be polystable if it is direct sum of stable object with the same slopes. So this is so we, uh, <coughs> this is the definition of stability in the context of far, uh, defined uh, defined modules with parabolic structure on elliptic curves. And let me explain parabolic structure of, on Q defined modules. And <coughs> in this case, parabolic structure consists of uh, parabolic structure at finite place and parabolic structure at zero and infinity. And uh, <coughs> parabolic structure at finite place is uh, given in a similar way to the parabolic structure of uh, defined module of T. I mean, we take a finite subset to D and uh, <coughs> we take uh, isomorphism between, uh, so, and we take locally free subset to V and uh, we take isomorphism outside of D and we take sequence of real numbers containing 0 and 1, and we take a sequence of lattices, which gives a sequence of Hecke transformations. 
So this is uh, given here the same way as in the case of uh, defined modules on elliptic curves. But uh, we also need uh, co to <laughs> consider good parabolic structure at zero and infinity. So let me explain. <coughs> parabolic structure uh, at zero. So we take the formal completion at zero of the defined module. And then <coughs> uh, by the classical result, uh, it is well known there exists a decomposition called the slope decomposition indexed by rational numbers such that it is preserved by the Q defines operators and its direct sum has a lattice satisfying if omega is expressed as L over K, then Y L phi star K L omega equal L omega. So this is an uh, analog of uh, fukara duvel Turing theorem in the context of Q defines modules. And, uh, <coughs> and then a good parabolic structure of V at zero is defined to be a sequence of lattices uh, P, P A V such that uh, P A V is the intersection of P B V for strictly larger for B strictly larger than A and Y N P A is equal to P A minus N V and uh, <coughs> uh, the filtration is compatible with the decomposition in the sense P A V is equal to the, the, the direct sum of the intersection of PA and v, v omega. And uh, <coughs> on each direct sum and uh, <coughs> phi star PA is equal to PA plus omega. So this is the de definition of good parabolic structure. And uh, the fa first condition and second condition are the condition for ordinary parabolic structure with fil equivalent to fil filtered bundles. So the first two conditions are <coughs> definition for ordinary uh, <coughs> parabolic structure on clouds, vector bundles on clouds. And the third condition and the fourth condition de describe uh, the compatibility with Q, de Q defines operators. And the <coughs> good parabolic structure at infinity is defined similarly as a se sequence of lattices. Difference between this zero infinity and the previous finite places. Mm -hmm. what, what is the dif dif difference of definitions? Why actually differs? At what point? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I don't answer. Sorry. No, at what point this definition differs from that point? This definition. So, so same anyway, definition is uh, different and. Uh, uh, I don't explain, <laughs> but uh, uh, so, it, uh, so if we consider the correspondence with uh, mono monopoles, then this kind of uh, object naturally appears. So that is the uh, reason for me to consider this object. And, and I don't know any other philosophical reasons. Sorry. <coughs> okay, and then, <coughs> so if, if when we are given a parabolic structure, then we can def define the degree as follows. So, <coughs> so first we obtain a filtered vector bundle on P1 0 infinity from V, V is the data in <coughs> uh, locally free shift in uh, parabolic structure at finite place. And uh, so from V and uh, the filtered, band, vector, filtered bundle at, at uh, 0 and infinity, we obtain a filtered band, vector bundle on P1 uh, at, with parabolic such as around zero and infinity. So we can obtain the real number as a standard parabolic degree of these filtered bundles. And uh, <coughs> as in the case of uh, defined modules on elliptic curves, we have the relative degree of <coughs> uh, lattices. So we define the degree of V star as the <coughs> degree of P star, this uh, parabolic degree and uh, the contribution of uh, the <coughs> contribution from the parabolic structure to finite place and some correction term from the zero and the infinities. And the slope is defined as the degree, the ratio of degree and rank of rank. <coughs> and once the, rank, the, the, the slope is defined, the slope the stability condition is defined as usual. And let me remark, <coughs> so, and the parabolic structure for defined modules on C is all defined similarly. But uh, in this case, uh, 
to and uh, so in this case again in this case parabolic structure of finite difference module on C consists of parabolic structure at finite place and good parabolic structure at infinity. And the parabolic structure at finite place is defined uh, in the same way. But the uh, <coughs> parabolic structure at infinity is a little more complicated because the cl classification of formal difference module is a little more complicated. Uh, there is a theorem of Turing on the uh, classification of formal difference modules, which is given in this way. And I don't explain it precisely, but uh, we need to take some ramifications. And uh, actually, this is a mixture of uh, decomposition by uh, sl slope decomposition and the classification of irregular uh, metamorphic connections. So this is a little more complicated than the, the case of Q defined modules. So the definition of parabolic structure at infinity is also a little more complicated. Yeah, but if you have like mini transform and if you make colonial model or C star, it will be zero probably. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. Yes, so yes, at the end of the day, yeah. Uh, so this this this, this uh, so yeah, so definition of uh, parabolic good parabolic structure at uh, own defined model should be translated to uh, <coughs> And the public structure of uh, of uh, metamorphic flat band on C star. Yeah, as you mentioned. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> yes. Okay. So then let me explain our main results. <coughs> so in a period, so let me explain the periodic case. So take any positive number t. Then, <coughs> so for each complex number lambda, uh, there exists a natural equivalence between irreducible metamorphic monopoles on R over Tz times C and stable parabolic difference modules of degree zero on C. And in this, uh, in this so for each lambda, uh, we can consider the translation by two lambda minus one lambda. And uh, so with respect to this translation, we can consider difference modules and uh, we have equivalence between these objects. <coughs> so in this case, very, uh, the statement is given very clearly. And uh, actually, <coughs> <coughs> so very clearly, and it is given in the same way as the case of harmonic bundles. And actually, now, so it, this is not yet uh, given completely, but uh, this, this equivalence should be translated to the equivalence of the irreducible wide harmonic bundles and the stable good filter lambda flat bundles on P1 by num transformations. So it is natural <coughs> to, uh, to that we can give this equivalence very uh, very, in a very similar way to the harmonic boundaries. And let me mention uh, Professor Elliot and Professor Peston are studying uh, an interesting sp special case of this equivalence in a much deeper way. And uh, <coughs> uh, in the W periodic case, uh, the statement is a little more complicated. So, <coughs> so we take a lattice of C and uh, we take any complex number lambda. Then we take a generator mu1 and mu2 of gamma such that mu1 plus lambda square mu1 bar is not zero and the imaginary part of mu2 over mu1 is positive. And this second condition is not essential, but uh, the first condition is uh, essential because we consider Q lambda uh, defined by <coughs> this formula an exponential of 2 pi root minus 1 times mu2 plus lambda square mu2 bar divided by mu1 plus lambda two mu1 bar. And then <coughs> there exists equivalence between irreducible metamorphic monopoles on R times C over gamma and stable parabolic Q lambda difference modules of degree itself. So this is uh, still ambiguous, so we need, we can uh, make more <coughs> explicit, uh, so we, we also have more explicit correspondence for similarities, but uh, I don't explain it now. <coughs> but uh, so uh, in this statement, uh, there is obvious ambiguity, I mean, obvious ambiguity of the choice of generator mu1. Let me remind you, Q lambda is given in this way. So if we take uh, different mu1 and mu1 prime, then we obtain two equivalences of, I mean, metamorphic monopoles on R times C over gamma equivalent to parabolic Q lambda mu1 difference modules, and it is also equivalent to parabolic Q lambda mu1 prime difference modules. And if lambda is, the absolute value of lambda is not one, then we can observe this construction is essentially independent of a choice of mu1 
by, by using Lima Hibbert correspondence. Namely, <coughs> so it is easy to see the absolute value of lambda equal 1 if and only if the absolute value of Q lambda equal 1. So if lambda equal, the absolute value of lambda is not 1, then we obtain the elliptic curve by obtaining the quotient of C star by the action of Q lambda. And it is equal to the quotient of C by the lattice generated by mu1 plus lambda square mu2 mu1 bar and mu2 plus lambda square mu2 bar. And uh, <coughs> uh, the, according to the work of Rami Sol Chang and the fan Rupert Revelsat and Conservative Soberman, uh, <coughs> they established the Riemann Hibbert correspondence for Q defined modules. And according to their work, <coughs> Q lambda defined modules are equivalent to holomorphic vector bundles on this elliptic curve with two anti Hartnell filtrations, F0 and F infinity. And it is enhanced to a parabolic version of the Riemann Hibbert correspondence. And then, so <coughs> for, for, if, we, if, if we are given meromorphic monopoles on R times C over gamma, uh, it is equivalent to parabolic Q lambda mu1 defiance modules, and it is also equivalent to parabolic Q lambda, Q, Q lambda mu1 prime defiance modules. And by the Riemann Hilbert correspondence, we obtain two filtered objects on the elliptic curves. But, uh, we, we can easily show, in this case, we can easily show uh, they are essentially the same. I mean, uh, in, uh, <coughs> they are the same up to the scaling, the scaling of the parabolic weights. So we can easily observe in this case uh, the filter, the, the construction is, it depends only on lambda. Excuse me, what was mu1 prime? So, ah, sorry. <coughs> so in this statement, so for any lambda, we take a generator mu1, mu2 of gamma, the, this lattice. And, uh, and the Q lambda is defined by this formula. So uh, I don't, I, I mean, I'd like to explain the construction later, but uh, the construction depends on the choice of these generators. So, <coughs> and, but mu2 is not so important. Mu1 is essential. Uh, and uh, so mu1 is, uh, uh, so, so is actually an element of gamma. And, <coughs> and uh, yeah, but uh, so, so, so if the absolute value of lambda is not one, then uh, we can understand the, the <coughs> we can understand the construction depends only on the traditional parameter lambda. But uh, if the absolute value of lambda is equal one, uh, it's not clear how to compare the constructions at this moment. Actually, maybe <laughs> actually we would like to have such comparison for family of lambda, and uh, so <coughs> so for fixed lambda. Uh, even if <coughs> the, uh, even if the absolute value of lambda is equal one, for fixed lambda, the Riemann Hibbert correspondence is, uh, has, has already been studied. But uh, uh, it's better to have such correspondence for family of lambda, and I it's not obvious to me how to how to discuss it. And uh, in the toy predict case, so uh, <coughs> so let gamma be a lattice of R three, and uh, we take an oriented isomorphism between R3 and RT times C, CW, such that the Euclidean metric is described in this way. So this corresponds to a choice of twister parameter. And we take a generator, of oriented generator of this lattice, and uh, <coughs> such that we assume uh, the C part of E1 and E2 generate a lattice in C. Then, <coughs> so we obtain the elliptic curve as the quotient of C by this lattice. Then, uh, we, there exists an equivalence between irreducible meromorphic triple periodic monopole on R3 over gamma and stable defiance modules with parabolic structure of degree zero on this elliptic curve. This is a rather easy consequence of the previous work of Charbonne and Hartwitz and Constitution and Sobel. Okay, so <coughs> let me, I'd like to, uh, let me mention, uh, so there are several issues to, uh, to, could be, to be clarified to obtain our, uh, our correspondence. And uh, <coughs> let me mention three of them. So first, you have to study the asymptotic behavior of, of monopoles. 
I mean, in the periodic case and double periodic case, there are infinities. So we have to study, we have to clarify the asymptotic behavior of such monopoles at the infinities. And we can, as, as I mentioned, we can <coughs> show such monopoles are very close, close to the direct sum of very simple monopoles. And we can deduce the decay of curvature in some directions. And so that is very important, important starting point for, of this study. And then <coughs> we also have, and we also give uh, the construction of reference modules associated to monopoles. And uh, <coughs> I, I will explain this later. And uh, <coughs> we also have to give a construction of monopoles from reference modules. And uh, as I mentioned, monopoles is uh, obtained as a dimensional reaction of instantons. So the construction problem of monopoles can be reduced to the construction prob problem of, of instantons or Hamishan instrumentary of vector, holotic vector bundles. And uh, there is a very fundamental theorem and a very useful theorem of Carlos Simpson on the construction of Hamish Einstein metric of on holomorphic vector bundle on non-compact non Kähler manifolds. But in his theorem, uh, the volume <coughs> the, his theorem deals with the case where the Kähler manifold has finite volumes. And in our case, uh, the volume of so if we take uh, <coughs> so if, we, if we can we consider R times T two times S1, then we can regard this as C, C star times T2. And this, clearly, this, this Kähler manifold has infinite volume. So we cannot uh, <coughs> apply his theorem directly. So we need some modifications. That is also one of the important steps for these constructions, for, this, uh, for our correspondence. Okay, so, but uh, let me explain uh, the construction of different modules associated to monopoles. So, as I mentioned, there is a very classical idea uh, to obtain holomorphic objects from monopoles. And, uh, and it is also important in our construction, but I, 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 we need uh, some modification. But anyway, let me explain the classical idea. <coughs> so, we take an isomorphism between R3 and R times C, such that the Euclidean metric is described in this way. And we consider open subset, which is the <coughs> product of interval and open subset of C. And we consider monopole, first we consider monopole on this open subset U. Then we consider the operators uh, given as number T minus root minus one Higgs field and uh, just number alpha bar. So we consider these two operators. Then, <coughs> The Bogomolin equation implies the commutativity of these two operators. So for any uh, small T1 contained in this interval, uh, the restriction of the vector bundle, the restriction of the vector bundle tau equal T1 with the V alpha bar is holomorphic bundle of U alpha. And the trans parallel transport with respect to the V tau induces an isomorphism of the bundles. But uh, because of this integral commutativity, this isomorphism is holomorphic. So in this way, we can obtain holomorphic vector bundle from uh, so essentially unique holomorphic vector bundle from uh, monopoles. And uh, if monopole is given on the complement of a point, <coughs> we take small t1 and t2 uh, in this way. I mean T0, so monopole is given on the complement of T0 alpha 0, and we take <coughs> small T1 and T2 like this. Then we obtain, again, holomorphic isomorphism between the restriction of E to T, t tau equal T1 and the restriction of E to tau equal T2 at to the outside of, outside of alpha 0. And if E are, sorry, if E, Either alpha zero is a direct type singularity, then this isomorphism is extended to a monomorphic isomorphism. So in this way, uh, for, from uh, singular direct type singular monopoles, we can obtain a <coughs> sequence of Heck transformations. So this is very classical constructions. But uh, uh, for our course, for for our theorem, 
uh, we need to modify this construction in most cases. I mean, so we so we have to <coughs> describe uh, the, the action of gamma in a, a proper way with respect to the coordinate, and we also need uh, the uh, curvature decay. Uh, we need some consistency with the curvature decay, so we have to uh, modify the construction as follows. So let me explain the periodic case. <coughs> so we consider the action of r, r t times c that will be given in this way. Then we consider two coordinate systems <coughs> for each complex number lambda. Uh, one is t0 and beta 0 given this way, and the other is t1 beta given this way. And uh, for, for, <coughs> for t0 and beta 0, the standard Euclidean metric is given uh, in the standard way. So by the bog, if we are given a uh, <coughs> monopole on this space, then the by the Bogomolian equation, uh, these two operators are com commutatives. But uh, <coughs> the T1 beta 1 is, uh, so I prefer to take, use T1 beta 1. Uh, first, m first reason is <coughs> uh, the, the, the action of integers is given in this way. Uh, it's better than the, uh, the description with respect to T0 and beta 0. And, uh, <coughs> and another reason is the with respect to curvature decays. I mean, we may regard S1 t times CW as a quotient of RT times C1 beta <coughs> by these actions. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, we have the projection from M lambda to S1 t1 by the projection from t1. And uh, <coughs> so but we have the relation of uh, complex vector fields uh, with respect to del t1, del t1, del beta 1 bar, and del beta 1 bar, 0 bar. So by this relation, we define the differential operator acting on E by, by these formulas. And then we can easily check the commutativity of these operators. So the restriction of E to t1 times c beta 1 are holomorphic vector bundle. And the isomorphism induced by the parallel transport of del E T ones are holomorphic. And moreover, this vector bundle with the metric is acceptable. I mean, the curvature is bounded with respect to the Poincaré-like metric. So <coughs> uh, we can make a st standard way to extend it to vector bundle on P1. I mean, we consider the holomorphic section whose norm is uh, polynomial orders and then we obtain uh, OP1 star infinity modules. And for each real number A, uh, we consider the section whose norm is dominated in this way, and then we obtain OP1 modules. And if the monopole is of GCK type or meromorphic, then <coughs> we can show this, this is actually locally free, and uh, the sequence of OP1 modules gives locally uh, the filtered bundles, and F induced is an isomorphism of <coughs> Uh, these modules. So <coughs> by taking the global section, space of global sections, we obtain a C beta 1 free modules, and uh, this is uh, a naturally 2 root minus 1 lambda difference module in this case, and uh, uh, this is the sequence of lo local free shifts gives a filtered bundle at infinities. So, and so I explained to, uh, so, and if the monopole has direct type singularity, then uh, the, the parabolic structure at the finite place naturally appears. So in this way, we obtain <coughs> the, uh, so, in, so by in this way, we obtain parabolic uh, defiance module on C star. And actually, this, this construction induces uh, <coughs> equivalence of uh, irreducible periodic monopoles and uh, parabolic defiance module of degree zero. And in the double periodic case, the construction is a little more complicated. So, so again, in this case, first we consider tau and alpha given in this way. And then the standard liquid geometric is described in this way. <coughs> so we obtain two commutative operators. And in this case, we use, <coughs> we use the following construction as convenient coordinate systems. Uh, first, there exist real numbers and uh, a complex number whose absolute value is 1 satisfying these conditions. And t1, t, t and u are defined in, in this, by this formula. And uh, this is, looks may strange, but uh, uh, there is some condition, uh, the convenient condi co condi condition sh sh should satisfy. And uh, such conditions almost uniquely determine such coordinates. So 
this, this, maybe this construction is not so, uh, looks rather strange to me, but this is actually necessary for me. <coughs> and then again, we obtain, we define the differential operator acting on E by these formulas. And <coughs> yeah, so similarly, uh, <coughs> so we, we obtain, uh, so in this case, the action of uh, lattice is described in this, in this way, <coughs> uh, by this, uh, by this coordinate, you just this co coordinate. So we take, define u as by this formula, then u and t induces this quotient space as rt times cu star. And <coughs> so, so again, so in this case, uh, the key point is the restriction of this vector bundle to uh, <coughs> t, t equal t1 is uh, acceptable. So, so we can, so by this condition, we can obtain this kind of accept, uh, finite, finite uh, <coughs> fi estimate of curvatures. And, and then, so we can, uh, again, the standard technique to extend uh, <coughs> uh, the bundle to uh, the o on, on P1. And uh, so by taking the global sections, we obtain Q and the defined modules. And it is naturally equipped with good public structure to zero and infinity. And if it has just type similarity, then the public structure at finite space appears. So, so this construction induces an equivalence of double periodic monopoles and Q lambda defines modules. So, so sorry. <coughs> so, finally, let, let me mention some problems. Sorry. So, uh, as far so there are several in, maybe interesting problems to me. So first, we, we have maybe it, uh, mod modular spaces are constructed in some interesting special cases, but maybe not given full generalities. So it's better to give modular spaces. And uh, it, of course, it's interesting to study topology and the hyper matrix of the modular spaces. And uh, I also expect some, something interesting to consider isomorphic deformation in this context. One of the interesting theory of uh, modular space of flat bundles is given by Pandeva equation or some isomorphic in, given by isomorphic deformations. So maybe there is some something similar in this context. And uh, <coughs> so discrete Pandeva and elliptic discrete Pandeva is that so yeah I, I expect but uh, yeah I, I hope uh, there is some relation and maybe I hope it's something uh, related will will be uh, discussed in the next talk by Professor Ramis. And uh, yeah, and uh, and also I'm, I would like to find an interesting class of examples. I mean, my my theorem is just the distance of monopoles, and uh, so it's not clear. Uh, it's not it is difficult to give explicit describe explicitly. So I would like to have some interesting classes for which we can de uh, describe the monopoles explicitly. And uh, <coughs> so there, are, so higher dimensional cases also should be studied, and it's also interesting to study degeneration or degeneration from Q defined modules to differential connections or something like that. So there are many interesting questions. So I hope someone will, will be interested in this talk, in this study. So thank you very much. Questions, comments? Did you talk about modular for Q difference equations? What about modular invariants? Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned it, yeah. So it it should be uh, uh, something analog of variation of Hotchkiss structure, and uh, yeah, I expect uh, something interesting. But uh, at least uh, at this moment, I have no idea. Yeah. In in the higher dimensional case, uh, what do you envision? Uh, just linear translations or other kind of transformations? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so in, in the higher dimensional case, maybe we should consider so. Uh, the action of uh, Z, Zn, I mean, we have, uh, we, uh, so in, this, in the case of uh, difference, one dimensional case, we consider only just the action of integers, but uh, in high, high dimensional case, we should consider the action of Zn, and uh, <coughs> yeah, and uh, so maybe we, we can uh, this con mix, consider the mixture of the translation and multiplication, and maybe it's very complicated at this moment. It's also, I don't know if it's true to some harmonic theory, but one can see the uh, uh, quotient by C by many commuting shifts, not, not by two, not uh -huh. by three even, like we have elliptic difference, but arbitrary many, and 
Ага. Это называется Story by... Я, 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 я